If you're familiar with Adobe Muse, you know that a few years ago we introduced a feature known as scroll effects. It's scroll effects that allow you to control the speed and opacity of objects as you scroll down a page and view its content. This Ike's Bike Shop is a good example of a few of those effects. You'll notice that the top of the page, the navigation, stays in one location as I scroll down on the document. You can also see that the bicycle in the background is moving at a different speed of scroll than any of the other objects that are passing by. Now, when we introduced responsive design, where you can design specific layouts for desktop, tablet, all the way down to smartphone, we had to disable scroll effects. It was too complex to really combine the two features together. With this latest release of Adobe Muse, we allow you to combine scroll effects and fixed responsive breakpoints in your design. So we're starting to reintroduce those two features together. Let me show you how they work in the Adobe Muse application. So here I am in Adobe Muse, and I'm working on the Pigeon website design. This is a responsive design that I've built out. It has multiple breakpoints, and I want to introduce scroll effects on a fixed breakpoint that I'm going to add to the site. Now I'd like to go ahead and implement a similar concept as we did on Ike's Bikes with navigation that's fixed at the top of the page, an image that moves at a different speed of scroll, and then I'm going to fade objects in at different points. So to begin with, I want to focus on the navigation. I'm going to double click on the master page, and you'll notice here in that master, I have multiple breakpoints. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see I have a breakpoint at 1200, 900, and 480. And each of them are what's known as a fluid breakpoint. I can tell by the icon here that indicates it's fluid, and if I roll over, the tooltip tells me it's a fluid breakpoint. Now, if I were to select an object here and go to the scroll effects panel, it's going to be disabled. It's letting me know I have to have a fixed breakpoint in order to add that capability. So for this design, I'm going to leave the breakpoints that I have, and I'm actually going to drop an additional breakpoint just outside of the 1200 mark. To do that, I'm going to click on the breakpoint bar, and I'm going to select Add Breakpoint. And I'll go ahead and make that new breakpoint at about 1250 instead of 1200. And I want to make sure in the drop down here that it's set to be a fixed width breakpoint. I'll then click OK, and I'm ready to come in and implement some of these um, scroll effects for these items. As I mentioned, I want the navigation at the top of the page to stay there. So I'm going to come in and select all of those navigation elements. And in the scroll effects flyout panel here, I'm going to click motion. And I actually want it to not have motion, so I'm going to set all of these values to zero. So I basically have no scroll motion for all of the objects. Now what I've done on the master, I'm going to need to apply to my individual page. So to do that, I'll jump back to my site plan, and I'm going to double click on the page that I want to work with. I'll come up to that breakpoint bar, and once again I'm going to add a breakpoint, again at 12.50, I'm going to make sure that it's a fixed width breakpoint and click OK. I want to add some scroll effects to a couple other items here on the canvas, and then I want to show you the finished effect. So I'm going to select this background image where I have the scooter, and in the fill dropdown, I can define a background scroll effect by clicking on the scroll tab, selecting motion, and I'm going to define this at 0.8 times the speed of scroll. We'll set that at 0 and then 0.8 again. And I'd like to also fade some of these elements into the canvas as the viewer scrolls. So I'll come in and select that group of images and I'm going to ungroup them. And I'll come over to my scroll effects panel and I'm going to click on the opacity option to enable it. What I'd like to do is add about maybe 400 pixels, so I'll set that value. I want the objects to start to fade. So I've got opacity set here, and I want it to go from about 0 to 85%, and then um, continue to be visible. So I'll set the last value at 85% as well. And then I want to stagger the actual opacity. So let me start at about a value of 200 and I'm going to stagger these handles a little bit. Let's just see. I'm going to bring these guys down to 400 again, 
It takes a little fiddling. If you're uh, new to scroll effects, you'll see experimentation is your friend. So I'm staggering the fading, kind of a stair step effect here. And we'll try their visibility at 400 and see if that lines up. Okay, I've got all that set now. I'm going to pull down on File to preview the page in the browser and take a look at what we've done with the design. So here's my page in the browser. And as I scroll down, the first thing you'll notice is that scooter is moving at a different speed of scroll. So that's working well. My navigation is staying up at the top of the page. That bar is kind of bugging me because it's covering up my scooter. So we're going to circle back and fix that in just a second. But as I drag down, you'll notice that my tiles are appearing a little bit late for my taste. So I probably would move that up just a little higher, but they're fading in in a nice staggered mode. So everything's pretty close. Let's deal with that bar at the top. I think what I'd like to do is initially have it hidden and have it fade in. I want to make sure it's fading in fully before these bits of text get too close to the other text. So let's try that. I'm going to come back into Muse. I'll go back to my master page and I'm going to click on that bar. I'm going to go ahead and select opacity as, a, as an option here. And I'm going to set it at about 100 pixels. I want it to fade uh, in. So it's going to start at zero initially stay at zero, and then at about 100 pixels down. So I'm going to set this value at first to zero and have it such that just at 100 pixels, it fades to a full 100%. So I'll go back and uh, preview that page again. So let's bring the page up, pull that on file to preview the page in the browser. And I'll look at the finished effect. As I come down, notice I can see my full image, but within about, let's say, 100 pixels, there you go, it fades away just in time to create a layer on top of the text below it, and I've got that nice fade effect. So some real fine tuning in the features. Now you will want to notice that as I press and drag the edge of the browser here, notice that if I get to under 1200 pixels, remember we set that at 1250, um, anything under 1200 is going to have the same old, let's see, there's 1201. Let's go just there. It's going to have that same old scroll effects disablement because I've got responsive fluid breakpoints. So my design is fluid for anything under 1200. This is just an example of how you might integrate the two features together, both responsive and scroll effects. I encourage you to give it a try, and we're excited to see the capabilities that you uh, uncover as you work with the tool.